To American Agenda, I'm Bob Sellers. And I'm Heather Childers. It is a standoff between the United States and Iran over a nuclear agreement between the two nations. Now, the U.S. pulled out of a multinational deal from 2015. You'll remember that. It limited Iran's nuclear activities, along with bringing some steep economic sanctions to the Mideast nation. Well, now Iran has started activities, along with bringing some steep economic sanctions to the Mideast nation. Well, now Iran has started producing uranium in breach of the deal in a reported effort to bring the U.S. back to the table. Uh, joining us now on what all of this could mean is the Senate Chairman of the National Iranian Congress, Amir Fakhravar. Thank you very much for joining us, Amir. We appreciate it. Um, Thank I, you for I, having me. I do want to address the thing that has actually happened today, and it's the third rocket attack in just the past couple of weeks towards the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, along with the one that happened last week that killed and injured civilian contractors and U.S. military members. What is Iran doing if they're having these rocket attacks continuously the past two weeks, including today, at the same time that we're trying to negotiate with them? Um, that's that's crazy, you know. Um, going back to that disastrous Iran nuclear deal, they are calling it deal. It was not a deal. It was not an agreement. It was something uh, that um, Ben Rhodes, the deputy national security advisor of Obama Biden administration, wanted to call it joint comprehensive plan of action. Mm -hmm. Think about that word. It's not a deal. It's not an agreement. Nobody signed anything. Just they wanted to say, yeah, we had a, we have a plan together, and uh, um, uh, don't be serious about it. Think about it. As you said, Heather, uh, Iran uh, is the only, only state sponsor of terrorism in the planet which is using the rockets, the missiles, to attack American uh, bases in the world, to attack, we do have a lot of other terrorist organizations, but the only country, only state directly involved in this type of attacks is Iran. Mm -hmm. Iran, uh, that was um, more than a year ago, when Iran attacked the um, Aramco, um, uh, Saudi Arabia's uh, biggest uh, oil facilities. Mm -hmm. Think about this. If this government, the Iranian crazy mullahs, could have access to a nuclear weapon, which is their dream, definitely they will use it instead of a rocket or a missile. They will use it against the um, um, Americans, against Europeans, against Israel. First, they will test it on Israel and against all Arab nations around. Everybody, they are nervous about it, and they should be nervous about it. When last year, Khomeini, Iranian supreme leader, ordered to um, the Revolutionary Guard to kill 1,500 Iranian student activists, to kill them, assassinate them mm. in the street with the snipers, this regime is capable of killing whoever mm. they want to do. And it's crazy to even sit down and negotiate with these mm. serial killers. Let, let me ask you this. Is the end game here uh, to keep them from developing weapons, nuclear weapons, or is the end game here that we would like to see people rise up against the mullahs uh, to have someone else in government? Um, Bob, um, it's, it's a very good question. Uh, President Trump's policy, the maximum pressure policy, is working. It was working. The reason regime have been very weak during the last four years was this one. President Trump instead of going and sitting down and talking with this regime, decided to kill Qasem Soleimani, the number one terrorist in the planet, the CEO of the biggest terrorist company in the planet. And that was the thing. That, as Mike Pompeo said, Secretary Pompeo said, and I 100% agree with him, how many Iranian supreme leader and Iranian mullahs, they can just understand the language of force. And the maximum pressure could help us, the Iranian oppositions, as we have seen last year. Millions of Iranians came to street. We have seen it during the last couple of years. The people, when President Trump came to power, the people have seen a momentum. They have seen, finally, an international mm -hmm. leader 
is supporting Iranian people can understand the people's desire to have freedom and democracy. I'm talking about 96 percent mm. of the country. Iran mm. has 82 million population. In every single survey, you will see 96 percent of the country, they don't want this regime. Yeah. They hate the mullahs. They want the regime go. We need to have this support. We need to have this maximum pressure on the regime to can breathe and fight with the regime. Yeah. Okay. Uh, more to talk about there. Wish we had more time, Amir. Thank you so much for shedding light on what's going on there. Amir Pakravar. Thank, Thank you, you, sir.